hey guys it's a girl cc welcome back again to another video if you are new here hi my name is cc thank you so much for clicking to watch this video so i just want us to see this video i obviously saw on tiktok and video credit goes to this content creator right here i'm gonna tag her below in the comment please do well check her out follow her i mean she is basically sharing her journey in this video as you can see she is seated in her car basically celebrating her three year wedding anniversary in her car and of course in this manner now when i say in this manner i mean she is crying as you can see in this video and i am wondering why she is crying on her anniversary day like basically it is something we should celebrate you know with wine with our partner you know you know you know how it is celebrating your wedding anniversary we should be a happy day for you but unfortunately it is a very sad day for her and she is making this video sharing her journey and crying i just want us to hear her out because this is a thing a lot of women who are married are single in their marriage please check this video out so today is my three-year wedding anniversary and i can without a doubt say that this has been hands down the most depressing, miserable, horrible three years of my life. I have literally never been so depressed. I've never hated another person more than I hate the person that I married. Well, I run my ass off and I do everything for everybody in my life, like me, my kids, him he goes to work and works enough that's it he works yeah his job's hard yeah his hours suck but he works that is all he does i am in a different town because i had to take my kids to their football practice and i asked him to watch our daughter and you know what he did he slept he slept since he got home what did i do i did homework i fed the kids I took my son to speech. I went to the bank. I paid people to mow my yard because, you know, he can't mow the yard anymore. I, um, like I said, made sure homework got done. I got them ready for football. I took them to football. I tried taking care of myself and went on a walk. But, you know, when I started realizing I hadn't heard from him, I'm calling and calling and calling and begging for the bare minimum of him to watch our fucking daughter excuse my language I'm just so upset to watch our daughter to cut up a watermelon and to make dinner I mean that is absolutely bare minimum that is not that is that's not asking for much it's it, and it's not even today it's not even today oh so then when he realizes that he's almost running out of time and we're gonna be home soon he's like oh I can't because I don't have this. So you know what a normal person would do? They'd be like, oh, I don't have that. Let me go get it. But guess what? He has 30 minutes until everybody's going to be home. So he's just like, I'm just not going to do anything. I'm just going to lay now because because I, I waited so long and now I'm mad at myself. Now I'm just not going to do anything because F it. I am 30 years old and I'm literally begging for the bare minimum every single day. I am a married single mom. That's what I am. Yeah, I don't work. But the amount of weight I carry, I have been applying for jobs. I mean, I can tell you right now, the reason women stay in shit relationships is one, because they don't have the means to leave financially, like a house. Um, two, the idea of a family. I can tell you why I've stayed. Money. It's that simple. I wanted to be a stay-at-home mom. He used to want me to be a stay-at-home mom. Now he just doesn't care because he doesn't care about anything. I shouldn't have to wake a 32-year-old man up for work. No matter what shift, first, second, third, I shouldn't have to wake him up for work. I shouldn't have to tell him what time to set an alarm if I can't wake him up. I shouldn't have to call or make people go wake him up. I shouldn't tell a grown man that he probably should shower after working all day. I shouldn't have to tell him to brush his teeth. I shouldn't have to tell him to feed his kids while he's taking care of them. I shouldn't have to tell him to watch his kids. I shouldn't have to tell him what to put the kids in when it comes to clothes. I shouldn't have to tell him where the clothes are. 
He doesn't even know my kids' teacher's names. I shouldn't have to manage his schedule and mine and my kids. I shouldn't have to tell him, hey, you need to refill your medicine. Hey, you need a doctor's appointment. Hey, you should probably get your oil changed. Hey, your brakes don't sound good. Not only tell him, but then I have to call and schedule that oil change because will he do it himself? No. Will he call himself? No. I am raising another kid. And so what's going to happen when I get my job? I am going to be doing everything that I'm doing on top of working now. I shouldn't have to tell a grown man if he can and can't buy something because he doesn't know how much money we have because never in his life has he ever downloaded a banking app on his phone. Never has he ever looked at a pay stub. Never has he ever even looked at a bill to see what it costs. So yeah, he might make the money, but who carries the financial weight? Who carries the way to budget the money? Who makes the grocery list? Who makes sure we have food so we can eat food? Who makes sure he has this, that, and everything else? When all he gives a shit about is getting high and sleeping. Because you know what? If he's not high, he's not happy. I should not be begging a grown man for the bare minimum. On top of the bare minimum, I shouldn't have to deal with the anger outbursts, breaking my shit where my door won't even close, putting holes in my walls, threatening to kill me in front of my kids. The list could just go on and on. And yeah, I know I can leave because trust me, I am leaving. But people can't just walk out and leave one day when you have kids and 12 years of life wrapped up together. You gotta have a plan. You can't just walk away with nothing. You have to have a plan. My plan is in effect right now, but I just I just had a rant because I'm just baffled. I just don't want to spend another day like this. And I know I just got to get through a couple more days, a couple more weeks. And then what? My kids lose their dad. When I quit forcing him to be one, when I quit forcing him to help, when I when he when he loses his job because he doesn't wake up himself, like <sighs> I don't even know where I'm going with this. It's just not fair. Um Happy three year anniversary to me. Happy three years of misery. I mean <sighs> oh, I'm trying so hard not to be bitter, but like I've just never disliked somebody so much that I should love that I just don't. In sickness and health, better or worse, like, no. Like, so destroy myself and destroy my kids to keep a vow? Nope. I don't even know where I'm going with this. I just, I'm, I'm waiting to get my kids from football so I can go home to a fight that I already know I'm going to go home to. So I can figure out dinner at 8 30 at night and do showers and get everything ready for the next day to do it all over again it, moms literally cannot give up you just can't give up because nobody else is going to pick up the pieces dads will check out dads will do this dads will do that but as a mom you literally cannot because you, you have to carry it all right, I'm done ranting. Um, I guess I should say what a what a perfect day to wear my um, Patterson Law shirt. Problems with your ex? Call Rex. <laughs> if you need a good lawyer, he's your guy. Uh, but don't worry, I'm not gonna need a lawyer because he's not gonna fight for anything because that's how little he cares. Which good for me, but <sighs> sad for my kids. Ooh. Okay, it is so sad to see that she is celebrating her wedding anniversary like this. You know, it should be the opposite, but it is what it is. And this is why I want us to talk about this today. Like I said, this is a thing. And we have seen a lot of videos on social media, not just only on TikTok platform, but we have seen videos on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, you know, women calling out their husbands for not getting involved, you know, when it comes to childcare, you know, looking after their kids, you know, doing some house chores, running some errands, you know, they, they tend to shy away from, you know, these, but which is not good. Some people will say, 
try and help your wife. Baby, you are not helping your wife. Both of you are in this together and you have to find a way to do it. And then on the other hand, there are some men who cannot handle pressure. Some men are, I don't know, I, I don't know if it is the way that we are raised, but then as a man, I mean, you, you, you can't just run away from your responsibility as the man, the husband, but some men, they cannot handle pressure. They might be going through one, one or two things. They would not communicate with their partner, which I said in one of my videos that when you do not communicate with your partner, you see things falling apart because I, I am not in your mind to know what you're going through. If you are going through something, you need to let me know. I have shared on this platform healthy relationship videos we, which a lot of married women you know, share their experiences. You know, marriage is a beautiful thing. It is something that we need to enjoy but not endure. So this video went viral with over 3 million views and over 700 likes. Now people were asking in the comments, you know, for updates, you know, where she is at the moment with the husband, you know, and she did two videos, which I'm going to show you, you know, in, in those videos, she was trying to explain further, you know, um, what, you know, made her husband, you know, do what he did. You know something like that i don't i i, I don't want to make this up i'm going to show you these videos and of course i'm going to show you some screenshots of comments i grabbed from her comment section please check these videos out i made a video last night just ranting while i was waiting to pick my kids up and i posted it and i never expected it to get as many comments as it did um or views I just, I was just having a hard day and raining. Um, I'll just tell a long story short. I met him when I was 16. I had just moved to a new town by myself. Um, when I was 18, I was a senior in high school and I owned my own house, a small one bedroom house. I went to school my senior year. I worked two jobs. And I had social security benefits from my dad dying. So I lived on my own. My senior year, I was completely on my own. I started dating my husband, who was 20 at the time. Um, he lived at his dad's house. He did not work. So yeah, there was red flags, but he didn't work because he was taking care of his little siblings. His, their mom was a drug addict and his dad was a truck driver. So he was helping his family. Um, we started dating and his dad lives like 15 minutes from where I live. And so I eventually was like, hey, it's kind of getting too hard to like go back and forth. Like you can stay with me if you want. He moved in. Um, my whole senior year, he didn't work. Um, just because I don't, I don't know he still helped with the siblings he helped me with the house he was good he was great um I think he probably I mean we were we obviously are close we've he, he's an emotional guy he did struggle with things but our relationship was good um then I graduated and he got a job and I was still working and then he decided to go to college with me. So we started college when I was 19. And the first semester of college, I found out I was pregnant at 19. He was 20, about to turn 21. And then we got through our first semester of college. We had our first son. Then we went to college again. And... Then we finished all of our prereqs and stuff while working. Well, I wasn't working anymore. So once I got pregnant, he was like, you can just quit your job. I'll just work. And you just focus on school and being pregnant. I had a pretty rough pregnancy. And so we were still living in my house, though. That was paid off. Um, and then we both got into the nursing program. I ended up declining because I found out I was pregnant the second time and I had a C-section. There was no way I was going to be able to go through nursing school. So 
at that time he was working part-time and going to nursing school and we had two kids under two and it was hard in a one-bedroom house but we did it and he ended up stopping nursing school and getting a different job he's always been a provider he always wanted me to take care of the kids he always encouraged me to breastfeed and to take care of them but life really did get hard during those times of like late night studying nursing school and then I had postpartum pretty bad after our second and life kind of started crumbling he was going through some stuff we went through a lot a lot of stuff it was hard and 2019 <coughs> things were looking promising they were great I ended up getting pregnant for our third child um, he had just gotten the job that he had really wanted it is a job in a glass factory where they work swing shift. So you work seven days the first shift, you have four days off, you work seven days the second shift, two days off, you work seven days the third shift, two days off, and it's just a cycle that rotates. So at that point, we had also bought a new home. So we sold my home, and then we bought our new home that we currently live in. And we, I was pregnant, I was still a stay-at-home mom, I was still in school, I ended up getting a degree before I got pregnant, I, I graduated, before I got pregnant for a third, I ended up getting a degree. I worked a little bit here and there. I worked at a rehab. I bartended. It, as our kids got older, it got harder for me to work too because sports and schools and pickups and we have limited family help. So it was just what worked. I had our daughter in the midst of COVID and that was extremely hard, uh, May, 2020 a third c-section I breastfed all my kids for a long period of time um, he was very very supportive my pregnancy it was pretty rough we argued a lot more than normal um, and then but he was a hands-on dad he was a dad that played with his kids he was a dad that helped with housework he did the dishes he mowed the yard he took the trash out he helped with laundry he he helped uh, granted, I was in charge of finances and doing all that, and I carried a lot, but he was still present, and he was good, and, you know, he struggled with mental health here and there, and then things kind of started getting bad again. He started, like, you know, having more anger outbursts. He started breaking things, would just snap occasionally, so I requested that he go to the doctor. I think I was in therapy at this point working on myself um, instead of going to the doctor and getting some kind of depression medicine he came back with Adderall um, I don't even know the timeline either 20 21 or 22 that's when he started taking Adderall because he thought he was ADHD and then um, he ended up getting in a head-on car accident that he really shouldn't have lived through but he walked away with just scratches his car completely caught on fire and I would say that really was a downward spiral at that point. Um, he was having issues with his family. We had three kids and he became addicted to his Adderall and he's always struggled with, I'd say like addictions, but not like hard drugs, but um, anything that makes him feel better. His therapist called him a garbage pail addict. Um, and then, um, just like weed, like he needed weed to be happy, which like, you know, <laughs> weed's not a big deal to me, but when it controls somebody's life, it's hard. It's hard to ever feel like somebody's happy. He, he, his mental health was obviously declining. I saw that I was trying to help him. Um, I think we got married. Yeah, you know, we got married in August, 2021. That was before things got bad. November 2021 is when things got bad. Um, we got married because we have a life invested together. We have three children. Um, we didn't have a wedding. We got married because it, I needed insurance for one. For two, it just made some things easier. Um, obviously, we loved each other. We had this life together, even through our struggles. Like We were like, yeah, we want to build. Like We want to make this work and then um 
Yeah, so I don't even know the timeline, but things got worse. Things got worse when he became hooked on his Adderall. He would take off. He would sleep in his car for periods of time if we would fight. He started breaking more stuff. He started getting more violent. He changed, obviously. It was, I can't remember if it was 22 or 23. It was 23. In 23, things got really bad. Um, he put his hands on me in a way that was terrifying. I mean, he, he strangled me. Um, and I shortly learned after that a partner that will strangle their partner, the partner's risk of dying within a year is 750% more. Um, after that happened, he did check into a mental health facility that focused on mental health and addiction. And he was gone for a little over a month. And honestly, my oldest son told me it was the most peaceful time. We, we were obviously fighting to make it work. I wanted him to be better. I was fighting for him to be better, but I'm also fighting to take care of myself and fighting to raise my children and heal them from trauma that they've went through watching this relationship. And so, um, he went to that, he got out in November 23 and, um, he was good for two weeks and then it was right back to the same exact thing. Um, he was in therapy, he was on medication and I stayed still after he destroyed my bedroom and my house. I'm going to have to make a part two because this is getting too long. Through this time, he always still helped me, but it's progressively, it's been a progression of not doing this anymore. So I took on that. Like he used to do the dishes. I started doing the dishes. He used to do this. I started doing that. Like just, just a progression of things that like he just would quit doing or I would do just to help lighten his load. And then it became solely my job. Um, the way he changed with the kids, like he used to be so good with my kids. He was such a good dad. Like if anybody personally knows us, they know what kind of dad he was. He was a good dad. He was, he was good. He was always the provider. Um, and then, you know, as things were getting bad, I was thinking, you know, I can't stick this out anymore. Like, let me just get my daughter to kindergarten we're living on one income, five of us. I was like, let me get her to kindergarten and then I'll get a job. And then like, if things don't get better, I'll have a way out. Um, we've continued to talk through this. Like we have, we have a close talking relationship, but it depends on what his mental state is at that time. It's always, I'm sorry. He does want to change. I know he does. We've had such deep conversations, but like, I can't continue to help somebody change at the cost of my own mental health, at the cost of my kids, like at the cost of feeling fearful, but I still tried. Um, he continued that he's been on medication. He doesn't want to be on medication. Um, he still struggles with addictions. Um, like I said, not hard drugs or anything, just anything that will make him feel better. Um, at one point he wrecked a car because of that struggle. Um, I've just picked up the pieces to a lot of stuff and I've carried a lot of weight and I have to not only take care of myself, but three kids and I have to take care of him and it has progressively just gotten worse and worse and worse. So the question is, are there not flags before you marry somebody? Well, it's not like I just like was like, oh, let's happily get married. No, like we, we had a life we were planning together. I have strong faith in God and he does. He does too. And he talks about these things. So like he's not a monster. Like there's no, I wouldn't stay with a monster. I love him. My kids love him. But I just kept thinking I can make it work. And you know, we made a plan actually the beginning of the summer that, Hey, like, you know, the same thing is happening over and over. Like, let's try something new. His dad's house is available. Um, and he could live there at no cost and my kids could stay there and it would be okay. Like it, when they see him, but, um, that was the plan. I've been working on getting a job this summer. It's really hard when you got a degree in 2018 and you haven't really worked with that degree. And now it's 2024 
and your main job history is, yeah, you worked a little bit after college and you have bartending, but your main job history is from like 15 to 19. So it's really hard. I do have like several job leads. Um, like I said, he wanted to be a stay, wanted me to be a stay at home mom. I wanted to be a stay at home mom. We don't have childcare options. Like we, if we do, we're, like I said, we live on one paycheck. So any job I get needs to make it worth it. Like my kids need drove to school. They go to school in a different town now. They need picked up. They play sports in a different town. Just a lot of factors that go into play. Obviously, you can't watch a 10-minute video of somebody and know somebody's life or everything. I know the struggles. I'm not perfect. I know I'm not perfect. Um, we've talked about these things. We've did counseling. We've did this. We've did that. We've reached out to church. So yeah, we kind of had a plan in place and he understood and he was okay with it. And he's like, yeah, maybe some time apart would be good. I was like, you know, I'm here to support you. But until you choose to change and you get the help that you need, I don't think it's a good place for you and my kids. I wasn't even going to file for divorce. I was going to get like a separation or something. Like we have our whole life intertwined together, a home, vehicles, a bank account. His income is my income. I manage the income. He doesn't even manage it. So like it is, it, it's intertwined so much that it's not just something you just pull away from because then it messes everything up. I'm trying to do it like the easy way. And just when it gets bad, it gets bad. And yesterday was such a bad, bad day. Not only I made that video just, just out of like sadness and hopelessness, something I've been praying about and trying to figure out. And then I got home and the situation escalated so much. He took off. He packed a bag and he left, which that's been the plan. Wasn't the plan until I had my job established, but I'm okay. We'll figure it out. Um, it's just hard. Wiping the tears from your kids. Like my kids have seen a lot. My kids have been through a lot. And I already know I'm going to have to heal my kids from something that I never should have put them through. I know he's not a bad guy. I know he's struggling. He is not a bad guy. But how long do you hold on to something and try to help somebody? That's where I'm stuck. And right now, it's not healthy. It's not safe. It's not good for him. It's not good for me. It's not good for my kids. So him not being there is what's best. I mean... I appreciate all the supportive comments, but then there's like hateful comments like, why don't you mow the yard? Well, you know why I don't mow the yard? Because my mower still broke. I had somebody start mowing once our mower was broke. He was going to get it fixed. He never got it fixed. He works long hours. So I was like, you know what? We can spare $30 a week to get our yard mowed. Yeah, I can do it, but I, I, I don't even want to get into all the things that I do every single day that make it where I am busy a lot. I am busy. In January, I started my weight loss journey. I do take time for myself every day, an hour to two, to walk, to work out, to do these things. Um, it's just a lot. And I don't even know how to put it all in a video. I know that after he left last night, he told me he didn't mean to do that. And I know he's regretful, and I know he's sad, and I know he's struggling, and I wish I could help him. But he knows he needs to help himself. So that's where I'm at right now. I'm, uh, I'll never not love him. He is a person I've been so close with, but I know he is struggling so badly, but so am I. And when I'm taking care of him, I can't be that good of a mom and I can't take care of myself the way I need to. And I'm working, I have job interviews this week. There's just so many things. I mean, I don't even have to explain myself. I really just posted that, like, just to rant to, like, people that know. Because the people that know us know. The people that know him know he's a good guy. The people that know what we went through knows that I don't deserve that. But I don't even know where I'm getting with that. But that's just to answer a couple of the questions in the thousands of comments. Because there's no way. I'm, like, mentally checked out right now. And I gotta do, like, I gotta work hard to focus on my health still. And my house and my kids that I, I, I'm trying. Um, I've been going back to church. Like, I've been trying to help myself because I can't do it alone. I know I can't do it alone. Like, I need God to help me do these things. Like, 
So, yeah, I'm done ranting. I just wanted to share a little of I've heard the questions and the situation, and that is what it is. It's not just black and white. Somebody marries a piece of crap, and then they're like, oh, no, what happened? No, that wasn't the situation. I was literally a child still. I was a child living an adult life when I was a senior in high school. Couldn't imagine my 10-year-old in seven years being on their own living their own life doing these things like I just could not imagine I could not imagine you don't make life choices at that age and when you do you deal with them and I'm dealing with it I was just ranting like I'm dealing with it obviously all right that's it that video has so many comments and it's a little bit overwhelming. I haven't been able to read all of them. I'll see some here and there. So I can't really like even address everything that's in that video because I just truly don't even know all the comments. I've read messages. The first thing I want to point out is it is absolutely heartbreaking to me how many women are living this kind of life and dealing with these kinds of things. And obviously that's why that video went viral because it is so relatable. And I think that's the important part of sharing things. It also made me realize that men are struggling. Men are struggling so bad. There's no, there is no possible way that every single one of these men are just absolute horrible men. Obviously there's got to be an underlying issue. Was it the way they were raised? Is it their mental health? Is it depression? Is it the pressure that the world puts on men? Is it the lack of resources men have? Is it the way that men were told not to talk about how they're feeling so then they just become like these people that are not who they truly are? There has been so many comments and I am so appreciative for all of them. Um, some of them are great. Some of them like are giving advice and um, encouragement and then others are just kind of like good towards me but bad towards my husband and then others are just plain mean mean to me mean to my husband and I just am struggling because I shared a 10 minute video of something that was a hundred percent fact that I was dealing with every single thing I said was true but I didn't get into detail all of those things I'm not claiming to be perfect I never have claimed to get be perfect my husband and I actually just talked about this video and this situation and some of the comments and some of like the mean mean comments and some of the struggles that men go through yesterday I am trying to keep like my thoughts straight because there's so much I want to say but first of all I want to say thank you to everybody that's reached out I'm trying my best to respond to the positive things trying to ignore the negative things and um, just trying not to <sighs> let some of the stuff that's being said bring me down. I'm so aware that every person's situation is different. I know the situation that my kids and I are in is not good. It is not healthy, it's not safe, it's not good for my mental health, it's not good for my kids' mental health, and it is not good for my husband's mental health. My husband is 100% without a doubt struggling with mental health issues. This is something that is very well known between him and I, between our family, between our friends. And I am human, so yes, I empathize with him so much because I know these struggles. I know the life we've lived. I know how the change has happened. I see him cry tears. I've watched him be so miserable that he hates his life. He hates the way he feels. I've watched him apologize. I've also been there for the outburst. I know what happens. I know the anger. I know all these things. This is my life. This is my kids' lives. So why, yes, I truly do believe some men just suck and just are not good people. He was a good person. He has a good heart. He has something severely wrong with him, and he has worked on it. Then he gives up, works on it. But I think when you're in a place like that, of that depression, if you've never struggled with depression for one, or if you've never... Um, loved somebody with depression or deeper mental health issues I think you don't understand the highs and the lows obviously in my life right now the lows are way more frequent than the highs so this is why I have made a plan and prior to that video I've had this plan this is a plan that we've been working to execute him and I together this wasn't like I'm gonna run off with the kids we have made this plan him and I have agreed on this plan he doesn't feel 
comfortable living together anymore because he doesn't trust himself because of his mental health issues and he knows how much I've give and give and give and how much he's tried and he's like it's just not getting better obviously there's a plan to continue to work with that but I cannot help him why he's living with me and the kids because I just can't put ourselves in this lifestyle that we've lived I'm going to be healing my kids from a lot of trauma um and you know like I said good and bad days he has good days where he's a good dad like that doesn't mean he just sits on his butt every single day there's some days where he does things and then there's other days where he's just not not doing anything he's completely checked out he is disassociated he is mentally struggling he is tired he wants to sleep he would rather use some kind of substance to just like escape so nobody's telling me anything I don't know already to give everybody a little update from that video we have talked he has seen my videos he is currently staying at the place that he was going to live um, he has been back and forth to the house because he's not fully moved out. The house needs some work in it, things like that. Uh, you know, we're able to communicate. I'm not in fear for my life. I am in fear and if to continue to live together, if that makes sense. I know, I know what's going on. I'm very aware. Um, we're trying to do like the financial split easily. He is going to be moving like fully like getting his stuff out of the house and moving fully soon but right now he is staying somewhere else last night I did let my kids stay the night there um, and I just got him back today and we are all gonna go to my kids football game together here in a bit so I guess what I'm saying is yeah this is a mental health struggle it truly truly is but I am a human so when somebody gets tired of it and tired of trying to help you get defeated and you get angry and you get bitter and I'm a human, so I'm going to feel those things. Even though I know what is the root cause of the problem, I'm going to feel angry and bitter. Why I went on that rant that day. I am just done feeling. Just done. It doesn't mean I don't care. Everybody is basing our entire lives. My husband's personality, my personality, everything off of a 10-minute video. I don't have to explain any of this, but our original plan, and which I think we're going to still continue until we can't anymore, is that he continues to work. I will work. I already pay all the bills. I have the financial um, stuff underway. So he will get an amount each week. He has nothing to pay for except food and gas money. No bills. Um, we're not like splitting our insurance or anything right now. Like our phone payments, everything's together. So I'm going to continue to keep the vast majority of his money and then like combine our monies together. And then he will be getting like a weekly allowance in his own account. And you can judge that if you want, but this is something him and I agreed on. He obviously wants to make sure he continues to provide for his kids up until he doesn't anymore or can't. Obviously, I know these things can change, and when they do change, I know there's child support as an option. I have the things that I need. I also know that we have a 401k that I will be entitled to the house. He's not going to want the house. It, we, we, we have a plan, so I'm not super worried about that stuff. Like, I can't. I can't do something until it happens, but right now I'm going to take the way that we had planned to do it. He will get that weekly amount of money, and this will teach him how to budget money um, each week since he's never had to do that with a smaller amount so he doesn't just go and blow all the money and there's no money for the kids. This will also teach him how to be a little bit more independent when it comes to that. He's going to obviously be waking himself up, and if he doesn't, he doesn't, and he's going to have the consequences. And yes, like my kids still have the consequences of that in the financial aspect but then at least I will have something and then I will be able to apply for some assistance if I need it and things like that <sighs> a 10 minute video again I'm sorry everybody hates how long I talk but there's just so much to say so I just wanted to follow up this the video because I just wanted to answer some questions and just be honest and open about things um today is a hard day I'll let you know that right now today is a hard day and I can get more into that if you want, but I, if you have any questions, let me know and I will try my best to make a video because replying to all those comments is super hard. So I'm going to show you a few comments I grabbed from her comment section so you guys can see what other people said about her video. Please pause to read if you want to. So I love the fact that she said in one of her videos that husband was once a good guy. You know, I don't know what happened. I don't know why he changed. 
but obviously something made him change like i said some men cannot handle pressure um and that is why it is good to open up to your partner if you are going through something you know you could basically seek you know for help now it is not healthy for the wife it is not healthy for the kids and i don't know i i really feel for her and um i don't know guys i feel for her okay like i said we can literally enjoy relationship we can enjoy marriage but we should not enjoy it it hurts repeating yourself telling an adult to do this and do that when you have already said those before you have already said those things to the adult before and it keeps you know happening it is it is exhausting okay for her to sit down in her car crying on social media you know dragging her husband you know and um i also want to encourage all the men out there if you are going through one one or one thing or the other speak up speak up because people might think that oh you purposely decided to be acting this way but you know you are not okay you know that something in, is obviously bothering you but please speak up anyways you guys thank you all so much for watching let me know what you all think in the comment what you have to say and please remember to check the comment below i'm gonna tag her there you guys should please go check her out she is still giving you know updates you know how she's going basically but yeah thank you guys so much for watching i'm gonna see you all in my next video don't forget to subscribe bye